This video is all about how to help you breathe more efficiently. And this is critically important for athletic performance and for our general health. So when we breathe efficiently, it actually can help to lower our heart rate, lower our blood pressure, and it also is a powerful regulator for our autonomic nervous system. And so that part of our nervous system is what regulates whether we are in fight or flight or whether we are in a rest, digest, and healing mode. So before we begin, I just want to give you a chance to tune into your own body and feel how you breathe. So you can put your hands anywhere on your rib cage, and I just want you to take a normal breath in and feel where does your breath go. So breathe in and then breathe out and feel which ribs move. Go again and put your hands somewhere else and feel if these ribs move here. Yep, and even put your hands on your back and feel if your ribs move here. And they may or may not, and it's okay, because somewhere your ribs are moving because you're breathing, because you're alive and you're listening to this video. So as long as something's moving, you're all good. But we're talking about efficiency. So we're gonna get a little bit more a sense of what would be ideal. <clears throat> so if you need to take one more breath, go ahead, take one more breath and feel where your ribs move and where they don't move so much. Okay, so when you think about your rib cage they house your lungs. So pretty much everywhere there's a rib, that's where your lungs are. And so the shape of your rib cage is kind of like a triangle. And so at the top of the triangle, there's less volume. At the bottom of the triangle, there's more space for oxygen to come in. So what we really want to make sure ha is happening is that we're able to get air into the lower recesses of our lungs and our rib cage. This is a um, good little visual that I actually got from Courtney Rolnick who I work with. I think it's a great idea so I wanted to share it with you. But when we inhale, it's like we're filling our lungs up with air. And when we exhale, a lot of times we just exhale part of the air out and then leave all this stale air in our lungs. And then inhale. We can only inhale so much because we already have our lungs partly filled with the stale air. And so again, we breathe out part of our air and then breathe in again. Air on top of stale air. So when we're trying to get more oxygen into our tissue, we feel like we're not getting enough air, we need to make sure we breathe all the air out. That means squeezing our ribs down all the way and what I call getting to the bottom of our breath. where we get all the air out and then we start to inhale from here. Start filling up from there and then exhale all the air out. And then breathe in the air from there and then exhale all the air out. What I want you to do next is take in a really, really, really full breath. And now breathe half of it out. And now breathe in again. And now breathe half of it out. This may actually, keep doing this as I talk, this actually may be somewhat familiar for some of you. I can tell you that so many of my patients that come in actually breathe like this. And I call this breathing at the top of our breath, where we're breathing all the way in, so we're filling up the, our lungs to their fullest, right? All the air's in, but we only breathe halfway out. And actually it's more shallow, right? Because that's where our lungs have the less amount of volume. So what I want you to try now is I want you to breathe all the air out. So focus on your exhale and breathe all the air out. And when you think all the air is out of your lungs, keep breathing out more. And now just bring in as much air as you need at this moment. None of us are probably running, so we don't need a ton of air. Just let whatever your body wants come in. There's no rules on that. But when you exhale, get all the air out. If you need a little help with this, you can make a hard S, like a S. When you make a really hard S, S, it recruits your abdominals, your obliques. Your oblique muscles are part of your exhaling muscles, as well as your intercostals, the little guys that are in between your ribs. And when you make that S, hard S sound, it really helps to bring your ribs together and help you to get to the bottom of your exhale. So for some of you, um, to be able to bring your ribs together might be a little bit challenging. 
I see that all the time in our patients. So later I will go through a bunch of exercises to help you actually get more motion throughout your rib cage so that it's easier to breathe efficiently. So just hang with me for now. So let's go back to that first thing that we did. Go ahead and breathe fully into your rib cage. And now breathe halfway out. I want you to notice that when you're breathing, you're actually using your neck muscles to help you breathe. These are secondary muscles of respiration. When we are sprinting, when runners have exhausted themselves and they're putting their hands on their head, trying to get as much air in as possible, that's when these muscles are very relevant and very helpful to help us breathe. <clears throat> that's when we want to use them. In day-to-day -day life, we want to be more at the bottom of our breath. We want to get that full exhale so that all the air, or most all the air is out, so that we're breathing from here to here. When we're here, we're able to be more in that parasympathetic zone of our autonomic nervous system. When we breathe all the air in and we only breathe out halfway, we're more in that sympathetic state of our nervous system. And this can actually lead to having more anxiety and more stress and less well-being. When we are sympathetic, we have a lot of stress hormones pumping in our body, a lot of cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine, adrenaline, and our poor adrenal glands are working like crazy to pump out these hormones um, because they're stimulated by the fact that we're kind of breathing a little bit more shallowly. And I'm sure many of you are aware, it's a hot topic all the time, is about how stressed we are in our society. So what if in one second we could have a reset where we, all we would have to do is one thing to bring ourselves into a greater state of calm within our nervous system? That reset is a full exhale. It's coming all the way down. So let's do that again. Wherever you are in your breath cycle, go ahead, take a little bit of air in so you can really feel yourself exhale. Bring all the air out, bring all the air out. You can make the hard S. And the trick is when you think all the air is out, keep going. Hopefully you're getting to the bottom of your breath. And I want you to notice that when you're there, Sometimes you can get this sense that you can just kind of hang out here for a little while. There's no urgency to breathe in again. It's actually a very, very calm place to be. And when the time's right, just let the air in, come in as much as you need and then breathe out again. Now in normal breath, we're not squeezing all the air out all the time. But if we do that reset where we do squeeze all the air out, then that gives us access to the bottom of our breath. And when we're breathing more from here to here, instead of here to here, it helps us get better health benefits. And as an athlete, it helps us get more oxygen in, helps us get more oxygen in for our, for our muscles, obviously, and then for our brain for greater clarity. And that's a great thing for all of us. So I wanna say more about how we breathe. When we inhale, our breath should actually start in our lower abdomen. So put your hand on your lower abdomen and also on your chest and feel when you inhale, your breath should actually start in your belly. And then when you exhale, it's the first place to move as well. Your belly will come in. When you inhale, your belly should come out a little bit and when you exhale, your belly should come in a little bit. So why this is, because you don't have a lung here, your lungs in your rib cage, right? So your diaphragm is like a big parachute, goes straight through our body, very powerful muscle. And when you inhale, it contracts and it pulls down to create a vacuum to suck oxygen in. So when it comes down, it pushes on our internal organs and pushes our internal organs down, which is what makes our belly come out. It also pushes down on our pelvic floor. And so you may be able to feel that when you inhale, your pelvic floor actually responds and feels like it has pressure that comes down. And when you exhale, your pelvic floor comes up. And as you inhale, your pelvic floor comes down because your visceral organs push down on it. And when you exhale, your pelvic floor will have a natural lift. So there's so many systems in our body that actually respond to our breath. If we can allow our body to release and feel that breath move all the way through. I used to wonder in classes when they would say, feel your breath in your toes. I would be like, I just don't get that. We do not have a lung in our toes. And so we don't, our breath doesn't go there in terms of our actual oxygen 
through our blood it does, but the, but the reverberation of movement goes through our body and breath also has an energetic quality to it that sources us and that moves throughout our body. Our breath is the first thing that starts our life and it's the last thing our life ends with. And so it's so important to be having this conversation about the quality of our breath because it truly can um, impact the quality of our life and our health. So back to this, put your hand back on your belly, your hand on your chest. When you inhale, your belly should come out a little bit, but not all the way. If you do have your belly keep it going, 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 it will actually take away from how much you're able to get air into your lungs. If I take my belly and I just inhale, I've actually limited how much vital capacity I can get into my lungs. If I let my breath start here, and then I immediately come into my side ribs and let them start to expand and then come down, that's where I'm gonna get more oxygen delivery into my circulatory system. Where I see most of my patients come in and breathe from, it's right here. So their breath looks like this. And remember, again, that's in the more narrow part of our lungs. It's not wrong, it's just a little bit more shallow than if we can get down into the lower recesses of our lungs. So your breath does start here at your belly, your belly comes out, and then the air should come right in to our lower ribs and they should expand. If your ribs are not expanding, don't be discouraged because I will show you exercises to help them expand more. But your, again, your diaphragm comes all the way around and your lungs are also in your back. So as you're breathing in, your ribs should expand and you should actually have air come into your back as well. So something that really helps me is when I'm working on this and I think about how I'm inhaling, if you can think about inhaling in behind your heart, it will actually help to direct air behind in the back part of your lungs so that you can get air there as well. And so then when you exhale, all the air wants to come out, your ribs want to come together just like that. And so this is the one second reset. All we have to do any time during the day is just do a full exhale. You can do the hard S if you want, the to really recruit those muscles to help us expire, all the way down, get all the air out. As soon as we do that, then we can just breathe normally, but we have access to the bottom of our breath. And remember, it's at the bottom of our breath that we're able to access that parasympathetic part of our nervous system that allows us to rest, be calm, think more clearly, help make better decisions so we're not quite reacting to things, we're actually being able to respond to things. And um, it helps us heal. Being in a parasympathetic state is critical for digestion. So many of my patients are not absorbing their nutrients, they have leaky gut, things like that. It helps our digestion actually to be more in a parasympathetic state instead of more shallow breathing sympathetic state. And it helps us heal. When we are parasympathetic, the neurotransmitters and the hormones that get released that are important for healing occur in that parasympathetic state. It also helps us with sleep, and sleep problems are so rampant in our society. Spending more time getting down into that bottom of our breath and that parasympathetic part can actually help us with our overall um, tension in our body and to allow us to even sleep better. So I really encourage you to just, you could set a timer on your phone or every 20 minutes, just do a one second reset where you do a full exhale all the way out. Again, it's not normal every breath to just crank all the air out, but we just do it once every now and then to get back to the bottom of our breath. And those of you who are runners, if when you're running, you can be focusing on your exhale, not your inhale. We all tend to think, okay, I need more air, I need more air, and we keep just breathing in, breathing in. We tend to breathe in on top of a bunch of stale air in our lungs. If, when, you're, when you're cycling, when you're swimming, when you're skiing, when you're surfing, think about breathing when you're surfing. I can't tell you when I'm surfing how many times I hold my breath, pop up onto the board, and I'm so psyched, and I'm just holding my breath. It's like I've really been thinking about, all the air out, all the air out, because you will breathe in. We don't even have to think about breathing in, it happens. But our exhale is critical, and to get all that air out will make a big difference in your life and in your health and your well-being.